Shakespeare, as he said at the pitch session, right? And um, so the thing is that we found out that uh, after he dies, they refuse to acknowledge it, even though it's on tape, his request, his final request. They're not gonna have it done because they don't want any legitimacy given to the actual author who he had given the pitch session to for his friend Bonamatura. So it's just amazing how far they go against the wishes of writers and such and artists, you know, after their death, they do whatever they want and deny the wishes, such as Philip K. Dick's wish that no, his work would never be altered. And there's Lucas even doing the same thing. Anyway, that's really yeah. standing out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're live. Uh, yeah. We've been live for about 10, 15 seconds now. So just let me know. Okay. Very so, good. Yeah. So, we're, we're here. Um, I'm going to give a brief introduction. But uh, yeah, hi everyone. We're here on the Yussel Missile Productions channel. My name is Steven Yussel. I'm here again with Tom Althaus, the creator of The Immortals, also known as The Matrix. And uh, today we are here the first Saturday of the month. We're trying to do this every Saturday, every first Saturday of every month at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And um, we're going to be talking about updates today about like what's been happening currently with Tom's situation and uh, what's been going on <clears throat> with Hollywood mm -hmm. and more revelations that we found out about um, what uh, the players have been up to these days. So um, we actually, I'd like to start off this morning with a screen share because we have a tweet from Elon from uh -oh. one in the morning last night. Uh-oh. It's pretty fresh. So uh, let me share my screen here. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at God. that. So oh, my God. He says, the irony is that my company is making brain chips. And he posted this meme of the NPC non-playable character guy. With a chip being put in his head that says Elon Musk is the enemy. When did this become mainstream to hate on Elon? I mean, we, I think, were some of the first people on here to bash this guy. Right. Or to make it clear. And so I also replied to this asshat here. I replied to him. One view. One view, he has the analytics to show how much traffic he gets. Yeah. One view on this. How is that possible? I said, if you're lucky enough not to be hypnotized by his pontificating, you'd realize Elon is said extinctionist. And he is just laying it out here under guise of speaking truth from a third perspective. And I thought that was a very eloquent response. Yes, it is. But one view you suppressing mf oh my god that's amazing because look at what's above look it this tweet 27 million, million views. 27 million views i'm gonna capture that. My, re that's my reply got one view impossible <laughs> impossible impossible i am blacklisted on twitter x oh you are look at you oh everything that i post i've been posting all of our clips i have about uh, i think i have uh 60 up on on twitter here each one of them gets about 100 views maybe one like two likes one of the people people that like it has a keanu profile thumbnail thing interesting <laughs> it's just like come on guys yeah. they're so obvious with the censorship that now we're down to uh <laughs> i'm just calling him up he's like the real fight is not between the right or left but rather between humanists and extinctionists it's like oh that's interesting elon what else did he say that's pretty basic oh he said something about israel because i guess something happened over there yeah they had uh israel just declared war on hamas oh check this tweet out now too also yesterday at nine at nine fifty four p.m if there's a big scandal about me, my only request is that it be called Elon Gate. What the hell? That's kind of a narcissistic response. Now, I get the joke, but the joke's so old. 
it's so it's such an old joke, you know. So why would he be bringing up old humor? And why? But is he the first thing he says is, night. "Yeah, yeah, at night." And then he's saying the first things out of his mouth. If there's a big scandal about me, and then people are saying that all of a sudden people are programmed to hate Elon Musk now. Like, where did that come from? Yeah, it yeah. didn't come it was, like there, there's no source. Where'd yeah. he go? Like everybody yeah. was loving on him. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we we're predicting was that he would have his, they would start to slap him down because <clears throat> he's not doing his job well enough <clears throat> for the cabal. And so that he's failing in getting everybody to love him to pull the wool over. So he's losing his uh, usefulness or the expectations being met uh, from the perspective of the other side. And so that they would start to do like a Will Smith slap down where he would be embarrassed and brought down. That's the prediction uh, because he's not doing his job well enough for the cabal uh, by getting people to follow him and, and believe he's some kind of Messiah. So, you know, and savior. So what's going on is he's, <clears throat> we're calling him out and it's having an effect. One view, listen, they're definitely trying to shadow ban you heavily on that. And they're also afraid of anybody hearing or recognizing what you said. So that means that, you know, the response late at night is indicative of a uh, being rattled, their fear. So Elon is rattled that he's making these kinds of things late at night. He's wealthy. He's part of the elite. He does not uh, operate out of normal hours. You know, he's going to um, shut it down, enjoy his lifestyle. He's not going to be responding late at night unless he's rattled. So he's afraid that that's going to show to his constituent or his bosses, <clears throat> his groomers, that he's not effectual. <clears throat> so that he's going to be responding this way if he's afraid that his bosses are going to be um, thinking that he's not worth the investment anymore. Let's have somebody else in. What we're thinking what's going to happen, Stephen, is that a woman's going to be groomed to be brought in. To try, they're going to try a new angle since it's definitely not working with Elon Musk to mislead the public as a savior figure, that they'll have a woman come in and try that. Sort of a, almost a woke kind of answer they're gonna try as they grab anything out of the kitchen sink to try to see if they can fix their situation and get their agenda on track time-wise by you know getting someone who will lead the masses by the nose. But people are being too smart. They're actually responding. And anytime you say boo, they're responding. And that's why you're being shut up so heavily. But people are understanding they're getting it. So I'm sure they're not happy with um, my plan to have a new show now. We'll have you on that. It's like a new show, right? And what are we calling it? The Unconquerable. So that's going to be something where they're going to be very unhappy about that because their whole strategy from top down is to isolate, destroy, um, destroy, quote, destroy, and alienate. and um, bastardize and um you know slender it's not working it's not working the evidence is too strong the facts are too hard and cold there's no way around what we're saying and uh the crazy card's not working anymore so it's just like we're just laying it out laying it out laying it out and they don't know how to keep their wall up it's not working go ahead so i want to jump back a few years to um i guess around 2017 when did the the trial and for uh, the, had, the, the throne one for the, with the lawyer. One was 2014 was the first one. The lawyer one was 2016. And then, um, so in 2017, they would feel like they pretty much shut the door on that with um, uh, any kind of appeal. So, Oh, so this fits right in then. So I have, I have another piece to show you here and the audience watching today with us. Thanks for joining, by the way. Um, so I found this article of um well, who who other than Joel Silver? God help us. Now this dude apparently purchased some artwork back in 2014. It's kind of kind of I don't know. But uh this is the artwork he purchased and it's like millions of dollars. Okay. Oh my god. The it's fertility, it's a fertility symbol. It is. Yeah, it's supposed to represent Venus. Like, female genitalia. And, God and help us. So there's that. So he went and bought this thing. 
It says here back in 2014 for eight million dollars. Oh big, my god! It's it's just a piece of metal. That's yeah, like, yeah. In, he, in, in the diecast community, you call that spectra flame paint. <laughs> right, that's what that is. Right. It's, it's it's just like, like car paint. Yeah, isn't that something? But he uh, he apparently didn't get the piece of artwork, and then he went and go, went to sue the the artist. Be like, give me my art. Like it's been like three four years, and I haven't gotten anything. And so he ended up dropping this uh, lawsuit with the artist in 2017 for some reason or another. And then these are other variations of the same BS that this artist is putting out. Right, right. Isn't that something? Because he's the guy that said that he doesn't make art, he acquires art. Yeah. And back rack that. And, it's, and then there's this reminds crap. Me of, reminds me of, um, God, who was the uh, Nazi uh, in charge of the Air Force? Um, Got the heavy guy, heavy set guy, like just, uh, I can't guy recall. Gra- grabbed up all the art possible. Goering, Goering. So um, that reminds me of Goering. It's just like the Nazi thing continuing, where he like just took the art from the Jewish people and other families and just grabbed it up. He's doing the same thing. He's just taking the art. Says he doesn't make it. He acquires it. And Goering had quite a collection at the end of the war. Uh, Joel Silver had the same thing. Yeah, same personality. It's, it, yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting because, um, <laughs> I mean, why are these guys? I know they, they launder money and everything, mm-hmm. but I saw there was a parallel there with the time oh, that, between the time he was purchasing this thing. It the, makes uh, total the sense. The lawsuit was going on. Total sense because he's going to try to shelter his stuff. He's also the one that severed his relationship, quote, severed the 25 year relationship. As soon as we went forward, even with the guys in place, they were trying to throw it with statute, like not serving the defendants, not serving him. And we said, we we're going to talk to the judge. That's when he severed his relationship with Warner brothers. And then six months later, he's back in after they had the thing uh, back in grapple and uh, snowed uh, controlled. So it's like, there he is. And he also left Alder carbon when the hit and run attempt failed on me and they in, in uh, Canada. Right at that moment, that's when he left Alder Carbon as a producer. So he just keeps running for the hills. So let's see what happens to him now that we're saying that we're going to go forward with litigation. And since there is no statute on someone with the condition I have, there's no statute. So according to California law. So we're in negotiations now and uh, with um, going to see through a legal situation where we have due process. We didn't have due process before at all. They controlled everything. We were not allowed to have depositions with Joel Silver, nothing at all, no discovery from Joel Silver. So now when we do, our plan is to actually file, no statutes, and we can explain that, and then order a deposition with Joel Silver, Alder Carbon, everything else, and uh, have a seven hour window that we're allowed, allowed, videoed and release it to the public. That's our right. And so watch what happens when we announce that, which we're announcing right now. He will run for the hills completely because he does not want to be on camera being asked any of these questions about acquiring the art, right? And one of the things that just stood out to me too was we have what amounts to a small museum of Central West material. It's like, I mean, they have that first graphic, right? You showed where in the first graphic of the Matrix, you have Neo School Central West, right? Well, we have the Letterman jacket, right? We have the Letterman jacket. We have the commencement. We have the diploma. I mean, you can make a small little museum here of all the things we have. From just that item, which was stacked with the other entries of mine, including my fiance's birthday, March 11th at the time, who was at the pitch session with Bonaventura. And then they said, Joel Silver never met Bonaventura, basically. Well, we have a picture of them together. At, in 93, when the stuff was submitted. So it's just unbelievable what we have. The, the story department was replaced, the head. Uh, Teresa Wayne replaced Diane Bellis. Diane Bellis disappeared off the map. Google Diane Bellis, see if you can find her anywhere. Just like Kate Chilton, the one that was at my deposition disappeared. Now we know Linda Burroughs is striking it, who was also at my deposition. They're running for the hills. These leaders of Warner Brothers are running for the hills since we're going forward with litigation. I want to screen share again to show that they are in fact running for the hills go ahead 
So the Tadler thing of Larry Wachowski's gone. Uh huh. The whole dating profile. This is the, yes. the bookmark. It's gone now. Glad you got the copy of it. So as we uncover these things and document them, they disappear. They're running. It's yeah. been happening. Uh, we also had a, what a fa- we found a Facebook profile for um, Linda Burrow. Burrow. Linda, Linda Burrow. Burrow. Yeah. Yeah. So we found her, and then she privatized her facebook account so nobody can search for her publicly they have to have the direct link to the profile and i'm glad that i bookmarked that because i you. wouldn't have found it otherwise good for you i thought she straight up deleted it and i'm a stickler for being like accurate with information so like if right. if i misspoke or if we got something wrong then like we correct it but like this this case she's straight up took herself out of the search results now we have uh, the Wachowskis scrubbing their stuff. We have Elon up at like two in the morning thinking like, oh, if, if there was a lawsuit, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, why does everybody hate me? Uh, that's the way he's going now. It's kind of nuts. Brian Fitzpatrick is doing the same thing. Remember the uh, FBI operative who's actually a lifelong yeah. Congress or lifelong FBI operative is Congressman handling my sister. Well, what's interesting is um, <clears throat> he's whining and complaining that he's getting slandered and put down and everything. And please donate to him to help him donate to the congressman because he feels he's being slandered. It's like he's freaking out because we're saying that he also will be named. So we got Elon Musk on the run, Brian Fitzpatrick, the lifelong FBI congressman who has destabilized Ukraine, who was just up for being Speaker of the House on the run, Linda Burrow on the run, who likes to brag about everything she did. In fact, she bragged right away when the case was thrown. It was her biggest win. What? You controlled the whole thing with your classmate. And then uh, Kate Chilton, who was supposed to not resign, you found, until 2029, who resigned immediately after the Sophia Stewart letter was revealed. That was this uh, payment payoff letter for Sophia Stewart from the period of 2009 to 2014. So you've got this total thing exploding on them where they're all running, all running. So we said, watch for high officials in like the agencies, watch for Joel Silver, the studios, Sony, um, Disney to be all shaken up again. Now, Bob Iger did not respond after he was fired the day after he said, you know, we have a tape of his top guy. So she's saying, he's gonna contact you. He's gonna contact you tomorrow. And I said, we did an interview back then where we announced that he was gonna contact. He was fired the next day, right? Gone. So now watch for what happens to Bob Iger because he has not come through. He was supposed to contact now when he got back in, he hasn't. And so since we're announcing that Bob Iger is doing these things now, that he is involved in this so heavily, along with Joel Silver, Kate Chilton, and the FBI, watch for what happens to Bob Iger now. He might just have a double exit. So uh, watch for that now, because we just said it just now. So the clock starts now. Watch how long Bob Iger stays in position, would be my thought. Even yeah. if they claim that only two views, you know, as they try to shadow ban everything, where I'm told, like, I saw one time you had a channel thing up. It says something like 4,000 views. And then when I looked at your thing, as it, when I pulled it up, it said, like, two views or something. I'm like, what? How? That's, just, that's a big gap of what's there. It said new release, 4,000 or something. And then it was like, two? Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> But YouTube's been gracious lately, apparently. YouTube's been gracious where they're like saying, here's a new item, a new show. And they have not been swinging the ax. So kudos to YouTube for allowing this stuff to go through now. And again, it's that seesaw thing going on with the other side where often it comes down to what they put in Game of Thrones. Again, you pick the winning side. That's what they do. They pick the winning side. So apparently the bank of the free city of Bravos has decided that we're a good bet now. <laughs> so, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, it's, it's just humorous. I mean, well, it, it, this is such a, like a heavy topic, but at the same time, like the way that they're behaving and reacting to us is it's, it's just silly. I was well, expecting a bunch of death threats and all that. There's nothing. It, they, they're spooked. Well, that's the interesting thing. You know, 
What's interesting is too, Sophia Stewart, right? God, they like to throw her around. That's a lot of weight to throw around, by the way. I mean, poundage wise. But the thing <laughs> is that you've got her, you know, saying on her own shows, if you will, that she has never received a threat ever. Well, that would work if you're positioned by the cabal. And that the FBI will take down anyone who um, messes with her. You're akin to the FBI. Of course you are, because that's who was put, you know, you're put in place to serve them and the studios. So it's just like, why not say you're guilty? And then she posts that, you know, that letter, the Kate Chilton letter, which they all strike and Kate Chilton resigns immediately after that announcement that it's on her site. It's guilty. They're just, they're just like children running from the cookie jar with piles of cookies. They're just caught coming and going. So it's just like, yeah. But I think the way we're approaching it now by just being straight up, you know, uh, here's how we feel, not trying to mask any or contrive any presence, just here's how we feel about this, bare bones, uh, is driving them crazy. Because it seems, you know, it comes across, I think, to them that public may see genuine. You know, we're being genuine. Yeah. No, Sophia Stewart, we're not reading off a script. We're actually just speaking. And people are hearing. And they're doing everything to push the buttons to shut it down. It's not working. And in Game of Thrones, again, it says if 10 people, Tyrion says, if 10 people hear and share, it is a story that's unstoppable. They say that in Game of Thrones. So it's like, you know, and who wrote Game of Thrones? George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin. And who, what, how did he do it? He was working for hire for HBO and Warner Brothers. So it's like, okay, well, there you go. That's why my birthmark is in that scene with the Knight of Flowers. The birthmark, my very birthmark is shown. And then I found, Stephen, that later they convict or imprison the Knight of Flowers based on the birthmark, my birthmark. So, so it's part of the plot. It's just incredible that that, that that is what's needed to convict the person. A birthmark is how you identify dead bodies. It's like, so you have my birthmark in there? What are you trying to do? Like with Wachowski's putting all the stuff about Central West, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the original, they want to be caught. They want to be caught. Or they think the public isn't as smart at all. They think that the public is never going to catch on. They had some kind of delusional fantasy. That's what I that think. The public's not, not comprised of brilliant people. Right. And what was I writing for? I wrote the screenplay. The screenplay was written for the idea that audiences were intelligent. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's so interesting is when it comes down to it, a lot of people are. And they're getting on to it. They're, they're saying, show us the facts, show us the evidence. So one of the latest claims they were doing was he never shows the screenplay. He never shows the screenplay. He never shows what's going on. Well, we, we do. You can freeze frame any shot and catch there all these different pages where they say oh. there'll be eight pages. Yeah. Give us your um, reasoning behind not publishing the script as of current. Well, we're going to do it. exactly. The question is, like, are we going to relay it or portray it as it is instead of changing it? Absolutely. Um, like we said, Marvel. Paul Anderson, Marvel, um, Cypher Man, right? Mm -hmm. That group kept sending emails and messages. I mean, tons of them. Using Sophia Stewart's guy, pretending to play nice, saying, let's do a blend of Cypher Man and Immortals. We said, no. We had uh, Steven Spielberg's guy, Spielberg, um, James Peter out of New York, his best friend, one of his best friends, who says he works for the great Steven Spielberg, wanting to do a contract where we'll do a blend of the Immortals also. Now, you know, and that always the blend, pushing the blend. We had Sophia Stewart's number one, Nicholas Jackson, who was saying, let's do a blend. Let's do a blend. And came up with all these weird configurations and storylines. I said, no, we're going to do it as is. Then you have Sophia Stewart calling saying, you can't do it. You can't make the immortals as is. We'll put an injunction on you. We'll put an injunction on you. All right. And the response was, well, you do that proves there's matchups. That's the only way you can have injunction if there's matchups. So, and we proceed you. So it's like they're caught so bad, they don't know what to do. You know, it's almost like the scene when uh, Lord of the Rings again, which is, they claim their material, uh, where Sam has the crumbs all over him, brushed off, you know, the crumbs of the lattice, you know, 
bread. The last of it, it's like, it's all over them. The crumbs are all over them. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, they're caught coming and going. Anyway, so that's why they're on the run. They have no refute. There's no way they can change every one of the videos of the matrix to take out that information. The school, the fiance's birthday, my birthday, my name, my dad's name, TA-499 in the column, Tom Park, Althouse, Tom Park, Althouse, across the screen, the clock with the exact birthday on it, such as this right here. Wait a minute. Here we go. Wait, sorry. There. Can't erase those. You can't take every DVD VHS and erase these entries. So, of course, they're going to be on the run. And the real battleground comes down to documentary leads into court action. And the court action is what they keep screaming, don't they? They keep going, you can't do it. It's what Sophia Stewart called with when she said you put an injunction on your work if you try to file uh, or try to make the movie. We'll put an injunction on your own, what, copyrighted work? No copyright in the Matrix. But as you saw, they cop Tom Hanks is commissioned and has a certificate of authorship of the immortals. So it's, it's a done deal. They know as soon as we get into a fair court venue, they're finished. In fact, I can see a fair judge just going, pushing the paperwork back, going, okay, this is a done deal. There's no way around this. The preponderous evidence is just off the charts. We're going to just proceed. The opposite of a summary judgment. Not one tribal issue. Let's see. You know, let's see. You know, no problem. Anyway, that's not supposed to be a rant. That's supposed to be a... Uh, Oh no! I wanted I wanted you to give a, a, a full explanation because I know there's people wondering why. But like, oh, you have the script, so why haven't you shared it to the public yet? But I I kind of knew the answer you were giving like ahead of time because like I I understand you want to either uh, have the audience experience the immortals as a film for the first time instead of a script because that's the way you want it to be experienced. That's what I've wanted. I'm going to change that up now, though. All I'm going to do is um, we've got it, it's not going to work this way. It's got to be laid out completely for people transparently. So with a new website going up, we're going to put pages on that and you're going to see exactly the screenplay. It's too much at stake right now with the children and everything else at stake. What's going on with Hollywood? What's going on with the world? The cabal's plans, the agency's plans, what's going on in Ukraine? We need to go ahead and bring forward actual pages and show them. So yeah. Now, that's what I'm saying is I'm not going to wait until the film's made. I won't put everything out, but I'm going to put out enough pages to show you exactly what matches up and um, for people to see, including all the ones that pertain to the neural link. Let's just put it all out there. So that's what we're doing is these composites and we're laying it out. And so we won't be able to show the thing as a virgin material, you know, but at least what it's intended to do can be done, which is help write the course of humanity. So rewrite it, reset it, set it on the right track, put the right timeline in order. So I'm going to go ahead and start exposing actual pages. In fact, if anybody even said, pick a number from one to 28, Stephen. Pick a number from one to 28. 16. Yeah, let's go to page 16. All right. So that's what I'm saying is just anybody. And if anybody wants to pick a number in the chat, we'll show one more. So here's a page right there. From the Immortals, page 16. Nothing to hide. So if anybody in the chats or lives wants a page, call it out, and I'll do one more, and um, we'll just hold it up. The thing is that we have nothing to hide. We wanted the experience to be done that was robbed from the people, the public. But the stakes are so high right now, let's just start revealing everything, and let's take away their weapons and turn them back on themselves. We'll take their arrows and sl sling stones and put them back in our arsenal and fire them back. It's so time to get a, offensive. A refresher question. Mm -hmm. How long of a period of time do you think it was between uh, the Matrix being released and you realizing that your work was being used? I fully realized in 2009. That's when I fully realized, which is the because the Honeypot wife and their, their attorneys were making sure I knew at that point because that's a 10 year statute from 1999. See, they were concerned about Matrix One being claimed. Then they said I couldn't claim Matrix One because they're running out the time clock, mm -hmm. like, you know, like two and a half years of running it out. And then they used the argument with Sophia Stewart saying that too you can't claim one, claim two and three. You're the missing link. That whole strategy when she called me 
was to say that I should claim two and three and not one. Now they mock me saying, you know, if you don't claim one and you claim two and three, how can you claim two and three if you don't claim one? I'm claiming one, but we were blocked from entering that. So it was all construed and contrived to make sure Matrix One wasn't claimed. It's my legal right to claim Matrix One. And that's when Sophia Stewart threw her hissy fit because everything was found, as we said, the school and everything else, fiance's birthday, my name, my dad's name, all that was in those graphics. That's when she blew the gasket. That's when she lost it. Because it's obvious Matrix One is ours. They stuck everything in there. And yes, there's other works in there as they made it up on set. But the only stuff that's entered as far as high schools and all the personal entry is on the original author, not the guy from Necromancer, not Philip K. Dick's information, not from Dark City. The author's information is what's stacked in that first graphic they shot. High school, birthday, dad's name, my name, fiance's birthday, all that stuff. That's the original author. So yes, there's other contributing parties. And they try to say uh, that they were borrowed from, used on set as they made up as they went along to fill in the blanks, as they made up as they went along. But that does not mean that is, you know, that's the work that's taken from. No. Dark City, um, uh, what's like uh, Cypher Man, um, uh, Alice in Wonderland, Phil K. Dick's novels, all these things were Ghost, the train man from Ghost, all that was entered in as they're making up as they went along to fill in the blanks as they're on set, grabbing what they can. So that's why that stuff's there. Of course, you're going to find a lot of stuff from the small minds of the Wachowskis throwing it in on set as they make it up. So, but point is the original author, this guy, his stuff is what's entered in that first graphic, the most important graphic to them, the first scene they shot. That's where they're showing the theft where Joel Silver is not creating art. He's acquiring art, as he says. If that makes any sense. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, I, I'm just, I'm thinking about just that, well, like 03 to 09. The last time it was released was 03 for Matrix. Uh, like entertainment they so they had a few video games too in the middle and i i'd like to dive into that at some point but, right because uh, that was their main thrust their main goal was to do a comic book ripoff of the immortals so they, they took this they got that remember the suits in that article uh back in uh what was it like uh 1995 said, we know we have something cool. We don't know what it is. And the Wachowskis couldn't explain it. Joel Silver picks up and tries to explain it. Can't. That's when he said there's robots in the program. No, it's robot-like agents. He got it all wrong too. So no one ever understood it at Warner Brothers. No one ever understood the work. And that's why the Wachowskis stopped doing interviews after they started doing interviews. Because Joel Silver says in an article, they were embarrassed. The boys were embarrassed trying to explain the work. Because they didn't understand it. It's not theirs. Nor did they have a heart for it. It was simply Larry's ladder, you know, that he talked about it needing a ladder to make his life good. Yeah, and they're, you could tell in their interviews are very withdrawn from they're lost. whatever yeah. they're talking about. Yeah, they brag, but they don't know how to explain the work. Yeah. So I'm tweeting to Elon. Good. Come, yeah, tell him we're on the air. Come say hi. Yeah, good to, idea. To Tom and I. I can't believe they give the war, the tech to an engineer, that they give the tech to an engineer to steal, who they brought in, who was a failed engineer. This guy hasn't accomplished anything. They're, they're providing him everything to put his face on it. That's amazing. And wow. They will see if he does anything. I, can you believe the, the reach for some of my posts here? The one view... But I, I don't understand how this is even happening. Well, when you send a visual attachment, people view it. When you send a visual attachment, so watch what happens here. Yeah, I got 300 yep. views on the last clip I posted. Mm -hmm. But only one, and that was from Penny Shepard, the like and retweet. And they're she contacted doing my, me, by the way. On my site, too, what they're doing is they're having it so it looks like one view. They'll allow one person in. The rest, people are contacting me and going like, we can't get, we make a comment, doesn't go through. We put a like, it won't go through. We put a comment, you know. Yeah, are you seeing this? So besides this one with three likes. Your screen went back to you again. Oh. That's right. 
I'm sorry. No problem. Jump the gun here. All right. So what? September 19th. Mm-hmm. No light. No activity. Just 320 views. Again, no activity. And that's something. No activity. Oh my god! Like some everybody's just gonna let it go. No activity. Oh my god! Two sixty. No activity. One thirty one. Oh my god! Hey, Tom Altos, check it, this out. People think you're a clone. Four hundred thirty-five views. You think you would respond, right? Two retweets, but only three. Yeah, that's wild. No interaction. Oh my god. No interaction. This thanks, is going thanks, back, Elon. And back and back. You think Elon's nervous? I think so. Because why would you censor my tiny little channel? Yep. 128 views, two likes. Two likes. You only let a couple of people through. Some of those are you. Like, come on, like what? It's not that it, this is an unpopular topic, it's a censored topic. That's right. That's right. And we are shadow banned, not only on YouTube, but on Twitter. Oh, TikTok yes. TikTok loves to censor with community guideline strikes. And, uh, yeah, that's just the deal. Unbelievable. And that's, that's exactly what's going on. So for him to be rattled that like that late at night. Two in the morning. That's hey, unusual. I... That is when you're, when you're totally rattled. My brother was like that, the one that's with Disney and Spielberg. He got rattled one night, and it was like 2 a.m. He did a... He did a response post. That means you're bothered. You're up. You're bothered. And, and you're obviously responding to that item because that's the thing that's bothering you and keeping you up. One so, ton. That's a one rattle. One ton a.m. <laughs> one ten a.m. Elon oh, Musk is God. the enemy. Who else besides us has been talking about Elon being the bad guy? That's right. That's right. I want to get a shot of that real quick. Just a grab, screen grab. Oh, yeah. It's definitely that's, worth That's incredible. Grabbing. See, that's – and look at that. What a self-serving thing he's doing here. It's today, too. This is from this morning. <laughs> there would be no – like, Elon Musk is the enemy. It's like that's not the chip that's going in. That – if he's responding to yeah, us – The, the chip is it. everybody loves Elon. That's, that's right. Chip. That's the chip going in. Everybody <laughs> loves Elon. <laughs> this is what he's Come afraid of. Come on already. This... Yeah, he's afraid of this. How? He's so egotistical. Very and... much so. And right. he kind of just wanders off with his talking where he gets away with not having to say anything. He never explains anything. He doesn't explain the work at all. I went back to what was it three years ago. He had a post I just saw for the first time where he was talking about Neuralink, what's going to do on an ABC program. ABC is owned by Disney. So there is, that's his go-to interviewer. It basically is this ABC guy. Yeah. And Disney all of a guy. sudden... Out of nowhere this week, Neuralink has also come back up and trending. Of course. Just out of nowhere. They're trying so. to get people to go for it. And we're telling people, the original author and team guys are saying, this is bad. The two authors are saying, this is not a good thing. We're the ones who came up with it. So it's like, you know, we can tell you all the bad things about it. They don't want that out. Boy, they do not want that out. They do not want that out. That screws up the mainstream PR program and the agency's PR program. What they're doing is giving you the final solution to get rid of the public, to destroy the public. And it's like, you're supposed to accept it. And they're laughing, saying, look, the public's buying this hook, line, and sinker. Wait, wait, there's, who are these two guys? Oh, yeah, it's the guy who created it. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the guy who's an author, too, that we took from. Oh, those two guys are speaking up. Oh, Keep that down. Shut that down. It's like, yeah, it's not working. It's not working. People are too smart. There's too many smart people out there. And they demand evidence. So that's why also back to your uh, original thing too, one of the original things is, yes, we'll be showing screenshots more, more of the stuff, more of the neural link entries, everything else, more of the lineups. I love that one where the guy has the headphones on listening to loud music, watching mm -hmm. this scrolling blips, he navigates the ship. I mean, Hello. And they use the exact same scene, all the layers in it, that would win the case right there. So if we get due process, you bet they're running. They're running because they know that with due process, the game is over. Yeah, it's that's a those are pretty iconic images. They're they're like staples in in the in the franchise they created around your work. Good point. Are they in any other films preceding? No. 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 There's all our stuff right there. And it's 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 two sentences on our screenplay. Two sentences that describe that total picture, but they did it detailed. 
Hey, I have a, so yeah. I got a question of my own. It's kind of on left field here. Please do. So what's up with Spoon Boy? What spoon is up with the boy. Spoon Boy that's bending the spoon? Oh, in that's the because what they movie. did was they they wanted they, they threw in all these extra materials so they would sound smart, right? And again, the one of the authors of this uh, one book they said was required reading for the cast, Joski said, read it. And what they said about it, they got it wrong. The author actually said, they're, they're not quoting me properly. That is not what I intended. That's not what I was talking about. They even got that wrong. They're too lazy to even read the stuff. They make it required reading to sound like they're intelligent. So the, bending the, simula- the spoon, simulation simulacra. Yeah. So the bending of the spoon was one of the um, add-ons. It was one of the things yeah. thrown in as they're making up as they go along. So that that's what I assumed, but I just wanted clarification from you. Right. On no, that. there's no bending of the spoon in the immortals. It wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit the storyline. But when you're making it up as you go along off using all the iconic images off of it, sure, you can stick everything in they want. You can put anything in here. Hey, Attack Connie. Juggling golf balls. You can stick it in as you make it up as you go along. So that was one of those things to make it look clever. You know, you know, when especially What's funny, Stephen, is you look at their mind as they're doing this. They're making up as they go along. They have union wage people waiting. And they need to throw something clever in. They need to throw something interesting. So they're messed up with what they do. Uh, we threw the ghost, uh, train man from Ghost. We threw in Alice in Wonderland. Let's do the white rabbit. Let's put a tattoo on her. Let's do the, you know, you get the franticness. And then the bending of the spoon just seems to fit as something you would throw in because they're trying to come up with anything they can. And let's try to do something cool. So usually their small minds go to let's, what's cool. And they threw in the bending of the spoon as being something cool. And because they don't understand what's going on either. It actually is a reflection of their confusion on what's going on, that they're lost as they try to create this on the fly. Yeah. And really, if, if these guys are operating from no script or on the fly, and this is some additional scene that was put in. Yeah. Um, the cast and crew can really like you could take the shittiest scene and script and turn us turn it into a good scene if you have the right players involved. absolutely well you know what's akin to that scene what's also in that scene that series of scenes with the oracle is there's other stuff going on in the back it's interesting they yeah. made it interesting where there was really like no point well, for it being there look at the sign above the uh, door frame of the Oracle's apartment, right? Yeah, the, the know thyself one. Uh, yeah, there you go. And stick it in. Stick anything in you can to make yourself look clever and philosophical. So that's what they're doing. They're stacking philosophical stuff, just like a attic, just filling it with stuff. And Did you, you know that when frame. you when you spell Neo backwards, it says one. Right. yeah it's like that's what's going on they they're small minds wanting to seem brilliant but they can't explain anything what's interesting is they have the cookies right that's so funny because you gotta this i don't know if i talked about this before whenever i did um plays and shakespeare and did tours whenever somebody was feeling sad the joke was that tom would offer them a cookie so i always offered them a cookie like here have a cookie it was a joke i would do if anything was like rough on tour and that get people laughing here have a cookie so a tom cookie so the oracle offers cookies and i was on tour when they were making it offering cookies and they were keeping close tabs on me while i was on tour because the tour uh, sse was connected to hollywood so I was being controlled by an international Shakespeare tour out of Stanton where the, when the film was being made. So I was being controlled by being put into a, a very prestigious position, offering cookies. So the Oracle offers cookies. I mean, when you know this stuff, it's just like, oh, my yeah, God. I'll, when you're able to piece together all this anecdotal evidence, uh, the, like there's no disputing it at a certain point. The, so, yeah, the, the kid with the spoon inserted material N- not from your work but extra fluff that they put right, in right well you know it's the a baking just- cookies thing directly a shout out to you from when you were doing your your uh, theater productions right right yes so- when i was on tour at that time when they're shooting it wow. and what's interesting too is i will tell you this and this is pretty funny um i actually have a bended spoon from the time i was given a bended spoon 
by an artist from Maui who takes silverware and bends them into positions. And it was given to me as a gift. I was given a bent spoon that's in my collection from an artist from Maui. And they put the bent spoon in the matrix along with the cookie offers from the Oracle both. Wow. I have it. I'll, I'll have to dig that up. I'll find yeah. it the bent spoon. I'll yeah, show I'd you like to see spoon. it. Isn't that something? Yeah. They stuck everything they could. And of course, I was being handled at the time. Of course, they're going to keep me close, right? Keep your enemies close. So when you're ripping someone off, Joel Silver, Elon Musk, you keep them close. Yeah, and, and the Maui thing is, is yeah. so Maui being connected to you, Tom, and I'm also explaining this to the audience. Maui is a big connection with Tom big, here. Yeah. So much so, I've gotten reached out to by people from Maui before the Maui fires, two months to the day. And Tom was able to get all of his stuff that he needed off of the island before it got scorched. Just in time. But you, the timing of all of this is just incredible. Just in time. And you, yeah, it's just, it is incredible. You got TSA or whatever it is, the security at the airport, confiscating my tapes, taking my, um, uh, what was it? The um, ploppies and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it was the airline pilot that called in God bless them. And the stewardess that helped me that I have, I'm going to, you know, and the guy at the front uh, check-in who helped me get all this stuff back that the pilot called in during the flight. And they, they bumped me up to first class because they know, they said that, you know, you're, you're the author of the matrix. We, we see the screenplay, we see the evidence. So it's like, it's like, that's what the other side's so freaked out about. Not only have they failed at isolating completely, we're actually signing autographs. We're actually getting noticed now, the mainstream media is not going to pick that up right now, but public is. People are getting it. Yeah, so I want to mention this again because I think I only brought it up once. But back in February, I took a trip down to Florida uh, in the like Fort Lauderdale, Miami area generally. Okay, So I went to a Walmart there, and there was this phone sales guy that was trying to get people to upgrade and switch services and stuff, and he... He wanted to stop me because I was walking by. I was a customer and um, he seemed like he wanted to talk. And so I stopped and I talked with a dude and um, I didn't buy anything from him. But he eventually asked me, like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, well, I, I shoot video. I'm a, I'm a film director and um, I do videography, like everything from post-production to editing. And uh, lately I've been doing interviews uh and i brought up your name i'm like do you know tom althouse the creator of the matrix he's like yeah mm -hmm. and i was stunned that he even like his eyes lit up name recognition of tom althouse in florida while i'm on a trip in, back in february of this year he calls his co-worker over he's like hey come over hey this this guy Knows Tom Althaus, the, the guy who wrote The Matrix. Mm -hmm. And she's like, whoa. So, like, it's the, <laughs> the, the Matrix is very well accepted in public in the mainstream culture. It's very cool. It's very, it, it's something that like everybody kind of like relates to in some way or another. Right. right. Which is intended to be. But it's because of the story that you put forth, not what they did with that, like the, the right. core of it all. The right. heart of the story lies within your work and they just made it popular. It's like the, there's like some meme out there where somebody makes something originally and then the person who stole it goes and like reshares it and it, it's much more successful yes. with the person who stole it. Yes. So that's the situation with Warner Brothers and Wachowskis and all of them. They, they made your idea popular by stealing it. Yes, yeah. And I, I, I'm actually like, I'm a bit offended by it well, more yeah, than a, uh, more than a bit because they've been doing this, not only to you, but to a lot of other creatives and they are creatively bankrupt. And that's why they're in the situation they're in today. Well said Joel silver acquires art. He doesn't make art. He acquires it. He did. They use failed people to do it. Bonham and Jura said it was revolutionary during the pitch session. We have Lenny Coco on tape before he died saying, yes, you were here. My wife remembers you. My granddaughter remembers you. Best friends of uh, Bonham and Jura. Bonham and Jura takes it and gives it to failed writers. He has a pension for saving careers of writers. Wachowski said in 1995 article, they failed as writers. They have to pack their bags and leave unless they were given the science project to direct. 
So you have failed writers rendering, like Christopher Nolan, rendering the work. And anybody sees the interstellar scene with the library as a library, and he's talking to his daughter from the library bookshelves. I mean, come on. Yeah, you know, that's so a, that's another thing that um, if people can get over it and, and join us on this ride, like you got to get over Christopher Nolan and take mm -hmm. him off the pedestal. He's no crazy. better than the Wachowskis. He failed. And I, it's hard. It was hard for me to even say that even a year ago because um, I was. I was caught up in the spell of Hollywood. Isn't that and, something too? We're, it's like we're undoing the curse in a way. Right. By talking this out, by putting the names and faces out there of these people, which it's irrefutable the times and places these people were at and then what they were doing and how they were involved with Tom here. Mm -hmm. It all checks out. And if you want to go back and, and like argue semantics with us and be like, Oh, Tom said like Spider-Man DC or something. And, and Spider-Man's Marvel. Like we're not, yeah, we're, we're not going to get sidetracked by misspoken terms. Like I put text over some of the stuff that you're talking about. If you've misspoken. Good. You've good. Mixed, you've, you have mixed up DC and Marvel. Right. I constantly mix up DC. But and if Marvel. you don't, if you don't follow comics, it's all the same to, to everybody right, that, right. that don't follow it. I actually so, thought they were the same thing. I did. I thought they were the same thing. So yeah, they're separate. Right just, so like funny thing with, with the comic industry is before they became movie studios of their own, they were selling out the property rights everywhere. So that's why Sony has Spider-Man, but Disney Marvel can't use Spider-Man exclusively they need to ask Sony for permission to use Spider-Man. Even though Disney owns Marvel, they don't own the film rights to Spider-Man. Like, that's how seg segmented this all became. And, like, Fox, 20th Century Fox had X-Men. And uh, so they just split everything off to all these different studios. Right. And they kind of shot themselves in the foot with it. And now Disney has no creative talent. So they're just pumping out all of this feminist propaganda and all the trans agenda yeah, stuff. Yeah. And Disney with Marvel, that's so important because that's the ones that stole Batman with Warner Brothers and DC. So DC, see, yeah. So DC. Batman's DC. DC, Batman is yeah. DC. Marvel is Disney. Yes. And they're the ones that well, they're both involved in the ripoff. So yeah, it's like because Warner Brothers is, is with DC. It is both. And Disney yeah. and Warner Brothers. So it is both. One example here for the audience is Oblivion. Oblivion was acquired by Disney. Then Disney hired a writer to make a graphic novel. And then they halted the graphic novel when they were in pre-production for Oblivion. And then Tom the Cruise case. came on board and put a hundred million of his own money into the production. I didn't know that. Yeah, here, hold on. I got the list. See, the that's link 2014. Here is when the case is thrown. That's when Joel Silver's given it by Disney. I didn't know Tom Cruise was that involved because he's, yeah, always, he's he, always popping oh. up the things that, that pertain to my situation. So it's always Tom Cruise coming up. I didn't realize he was the real bad. Of course, Scientology. Here we oh go. Oh, my God. Tom Cruise commits to 100 million universal sci-fi pick Oblivion. Oh, oh so maybe he didn't give... Okay, oh, he so he didn't give it. 100 million. He's he, not. He jumped on board the project that is valued at a hundred million. So I misspoke there. You see, it happens. Oh my god, wait, so, wait, stop. Disney and Universal. Hold on, I'm making a note. Disney and Universal is who Pat Robertson's uh Ned and Judy Nankovich, who were at Pat Robertson's organization, became in the story departments of Disney and Universal to directly get my work to Disney and Universal. And here's Universal, Disney and Universal. Wow. This is wild. After the case is thrown, they do Oblivion, which is completely the ripoff, even using the main characters, Jack and Juliet, and my brother and sister who were bought by Disney and Warner Brothers. Yeah, it says Disney and Warner. Universal had a bid. This in is war. incredible. Perfect. Oh my gosh. When we get all this out there, it's going to be so clear. I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, we'll just do it publicly. Um, as far as the script being laid out completely ahead of time, before the film shot. Well, I was thinking the documentary would be done first 
and then we release it. But since you're teaming with me on the documentary and doing all this stuff, we're teaming. What do you think? Do you think we should do the documentary first and then release the film and, and allow people to have an untainted experience? If we, since we can control the yeah. time when it's done now. So do you think, or do you think we should just release everything ahead of time? I don't, I don't have a right answer in mind. So I don't think we should release the whole thing ahead of time uh, simply because this is still like a, in a, well, I don't know how to describe it. Like a discovery problem. If this were the oh, right. actual court case, we are doing discovery. Right. So we're getting get done all the little possible. points all on video and audio. And then we can go in and, and like organize everything in terms of like topic. There's a bunch of stuff we can just combine on Keanu. There's a bunch of stuff on the Wachowskis, a bunch of stuff on uh, Weinstein uh, and all the people that are involved with Miramax and Disney and Pat Robertson. And you're right. I know it's making you think about a lot of stuff, but it's. Well, you know what? You just gave me a thought of the director's cut. Basically, when we make this thing, Immortals, as is, as is, which they don't want us to do from Sophia Stewart to Tom Hanks, you name it. Um, we make it as is, you could have a thing where it has inserted material through that film, also a cut where it shows all through the film, all the, all the things that pertain, that are important, would really be eye-opening, where you see matchup after matchup after matchup after matchup, Matrix here, Oblivion here. Yeah, and I think showing Alan like Carbon. a physical tree with text going, like a tree showing how everybody's connected. As it plays. Yes, I think, and when the yeah, when those people uh, introduce themselves into the, uh, it's really hard to discuss this because we're (laughs) we're talking about real life events, but but we're talking about it in a way where (laughs) I guess it's like meta in a way. So yeah, I could see it where it's rolling and it goes. Here's um, Forever Young, Mel Gibson, da da. Here's Interstellar, Interstellar again. Here's Inception. Here's, you know, just how they used up like a phone book, all those entries on the Immortals, right? How many, how many copyright entries did you see by Warner Brothers and HBO on the Immortals? How uh, many copyright entries? Hundreds. Hundreds. And how many subtitles did they put under Immortals to launder it? It was like 170 or something. 346 to 346. Yeah. My that, numbers are all off because I don't have them in front of me. Don't you worry about so. it. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to grill you, but it actually went up to 30,000. So you're looking at that's how many they, they just what they thought by pounding out these um, extra attachments to it that they could get away with it, that it would make them safer. It's just it's just unbelievable. I mean, I would ask anybody listening, would you be pissed knowing your work was stolen this vagrantly and that your loved ones lost their lives over this and they keep throwing, you know, their will throw. He's angry. Yeah, this isn't the the normal Hollywood ripoff. This is a like, like you said, Tom, a, th- a thousand different entries on the copyright office. Imagine your work getting stolen a thousand times. Yeah, and that's what's happening here. With it Tom. shows how much interest there was in that work when Bonaventura said it was revolutionary. Bonaventura was at that pitch session, you know. And then Lenny Coco, Lenny Coco, best friends with Bonaventura, Lenny Coco and the Chimes, top Billboard hit guy. Um. And then his relative is working for the law firm they provide to throw the case. Mary Mespinoza is related to Lenny Coco. It was all lined up. And then my daughter is married to that law firm's nephew. And estranged from me, the little girl in the Matrix, which was put there because the daddy, the author, wanted to reunite with his kids. That's why the little girl at the end. And then that's why they say the little girl is just a subplot. That's all they say about her on their fan page because they're trying to negate. And that's why the little girl does not have the relationship with her daddy, Neo, Thomas A, in the screenplay. They want to disconnect that, which ruins the story. You can't have a satisfying ending unless you put the relationship back between Neo and his daughter, who's represented by Sati. Yeah, and that's a very bit... It makes sense, too, because Sati has no purpose in the story. Not in the Matrix version, not in the ripped-off version, not as the unless Matrix you're version. going to use her as 
a pawn. Like, we talked about this before, mm-hmm. but Matrix 4, I said the Matrix 4 should have been Merovingian running an AI sex slavery. Oh, there's so many. And Sati being that. like at the center of it. I thought for sure, I haven't seen it, I'm not going to see it, but I thought for sure they would resurrect the little girl and try to make sense of her because I kept saying in interviews how the little girl's integral essential to a satisfying ending i would have made it where she never aged at all but see this is part of your story where she like her she mentally doesn't age right but she turns old right she gets old but mentally she's still the child at that point because she has alzheimer's so it's like but what happens is you know when i despise christopher nolan for about the scene ruining it in interstellar but back to it that just bothers me a lot um she, what she should have done is had Brit, well, her actual name was Brittany in the original work. You can see the letters being rich round for Sati, Immortals for Matrix, Brittany for Sati. Yeah, Thomas A for Thomas A. God, they're not very creative, are they? Not creative at all. But they should have had Sati in the final one where she's integral and they find out that she is connected to Neo. They should have put it back. If you want to make sense of the ending, then put it back the way the original author had it and tie Sati back to Neo where he discovers that she is from him. Or I don't think they him. ever, they never planned to have a, a second and third film. And no, they that's didn't. why she's no, they not didn't. in the first one. That's right. They He's a, a single childless male in his 20s or so, right? Right, right. And that can't add a daughter to them. Like it changes the whole dynamic of the story. In ours, he's 30 and he has a young six-year-old in the beginning. (sighs) Six-year-old, see? And that's about the same. That's about six years old Sati, isn't it? She's the same old age. That's right. That's right. And it's supposed to be a crowded train station scene where all these people are trying to get the program. All these haggard people are pushing their kids forward as they did in Legend later. A bunch and of cuts, so, you know, you can just put somebody in a tile, like a porcelain tile room that makes it look like a bathroom and call it train station. Right? They were cutting on the budget. They were cutting down on the budget. Here it is right here. Oh, this is the second one. That's the Immortal Transport Terminal, right? Dusk. Okay, so that's that one. Here we go. Gosh, they used everything in this. Everything's in here. Um, But the train station scene... I'm just trying to find it real quick where it is in here. I'm having trouble locating it right away. So I've shown some clips. Oh, anyway, you got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like we showed I Am Legend with the crowded train scene. Right, right, right. And the the woman screaming out for their children, like to give the children to them and everything. Right. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they come back with a Matrix 5, you know, and they'll have, uh, they'll restore it the way the author originally has it, you know, original author here. What they'll do is they'll put uh, the little girl somehow tied to Neo. I, what I think they'll try to do uh, in ruining it further is make Neo somehow the little girl. That somehow Neo is actually an alternate of the little girl. Yeah, that's what I was going to say yeah. about. And that's, they can push the transgender thing. See, that actually Neo is a little girl in the future where, whoa, he turned younger. And he's the little girl and he is, wait, he's the little girl. So he's a transgender in the future, younger, <gasps> mind blowing. It's going to be garbage. They have no creativity because even the low hanging fruit of Neo reincarnating as a woman, they couldn't even do that. No, but Just that's what they no would No original thought. Like that's this kind of cringe stuff where I was like, mm-hmm. please Wachowskis, don't do it. Well, you know, they, they didn't do it. They watch because they don't have any original thought of their own. No, but they they hungrily they watch everything we say. One of the reasons you have one view shown, only one view, is because their teams are watching too. They're all watching. And what they do is they decide, they respond to what we say. They respond to what we say, like when Bob Iger was fired the day after the one interview. And when I announced that I talked, I was going to talk to him. And it was on tape. Anyway, and it, you know, subsequently, at the same time, they did that low echelon sting of the pedophiles in the parks. The same day, the next day. But watch how they will want to do this. They'll want to hungrily do this, where the little girl will be Neo in the future as a younger little girl. 
and the transgender idea where Neo discovers that he's actually this little girl now. They're, they're going to want to do it. They're going to want to do it because the author said it. But it's not a good idea. We can make it a good idea. We can take anything and make it good. I mean, I could do that. Like the, the Disney guys are asking me, how long would it take you to write The Matrix? First of all, the Disney guys are asking me, how long would it take me to write The Matrix? And I said a month. The Matrix, Matrix 2, they said, actually. Matrix 2, they called it. There's Matrix 4 out, but they're asking how I can do Matrix 2, which means they're not satisfied with the 2, 3, or 4. But the thing is, like, you know, they're asking that. Disney's asking that. And yes, I, we could clean that up. You and I, we could clean that up. We're writers, we could clean that up. We could turn that into, uh, jointly, something that works. Yeah, we can make Neo as the little girl in the future. Wow, it's mind-blowing. If I was them, if I had, like, just money to throw at this thing, I would just make Matrix 5 called Matrix Reloaded. The way that you're talking yeah. about this, like they're calling yeah. it Matrix 2. Yeah. Why not make a remake and call it the same as the second one, which was also a, like idea. a reboot remake? That's a great idea. I love it. The, the, the creativity from minds like us going into this Hollywood system, it's like they are leeches. They're, they're parasites. <sighs> They're so busy going the to ideas go to fruition through them, but they're not going to uh, do that. They have their own agenda at hand, and it goes. It's a tale as old as time. We don't even need to address it either. I mean, it, it, these people are out to corrupt society, and they've been. Do I think I found the year that they they got unlocked to do that. It was like sixty four, I think. Okay, nineteen sixty four. They got like all of these restrictions let go, and then they started like showing full frontal nudity and shit in, in these R flicks. So it wasn't like that all the time, but it does give me a good cutoff point of having a digital video library going up to 64 and then a separate library of this is after the, um, the Jews in Hollywood decided that they want to take or remove all censorship and just have depravity left and right and that's why these um okay so vhs i'm really upset about vhs owning these uh tape wars because betamax is the superior format and vhs took over because of the porn industry brought to you oh. by the jews so it's it just like i said it's a tale as old as time we don't have to talk about it on here but i'm addressing it just because there's some people that say that we're not like, we don't have the balls to talk about this stuff. Well, here we are. We're on YouTube talking about it. What are you going to do? We're not. Well, all we're doing is is pointing out what's there. And we're questioning yeah, why. That's right. The way they are. You know, what's interesting, Stephen, too, is that the Zionists in Hollywood are the ones that are actually persecuting the Jews, Jewish people. It's like they they are. It, look at me. I have part Jewish blood. And they took my work, right, to the Zionists. The Zionists are also responsible for the persecutions in World War II yeah. that worked with the Nazi government. You know, they did. And a lot of Hitler's group were percentages of Jewish. Yeah. And it's like they were getting rid of the European Jews. And it was like they, they still have this hierarchy in that demographic. And it's like, the Zionists want to be superior to the rest of the Jewish population. Yeah. Hey, like, so we got, you know, so, so uh, here's another question. Was the city of Zion in the immortal script or was that something what the Wachowskis and Warner brothers added? I had, here's the interesting answer. Again, it, it just, it is attached. When I pitched it, I talked about, he said, where'd this come from? Like Bonham is saying that during the pitch session. And um, I believe there's a tape of that pitch session actually. Because Otika was taping it, the pitch session. Wouldn't that be something to surface? <sighs> but the thing is, yeah, that would be something. Because in that pitch session where the granddaughter and Lenny Coco's wife was there and Kirsten was there and Otika was there, my housemates who were, you know, done grabbed up by Spielberg and Disney. What's her name again? Otika. Otika Ball. Otika, Otika Ball. Bernard. Otika okay. Bernard is the I wanna, one. I want to formally it. ask this. Otika Ball, if you're watching this and you still have the tape, that you recorded of Tom pitching the immortals to Bonaventura, please come forward with the tape. Please. If you, if you have it, 
on analog and you don't have it digital yet, please contact us and we'll get it digitized and we'll put it into the record. Right. Cause it's I mean nice. that the fact that there is a possibility of that being out there, um, I have to ask. So well, if, let me, if let me address asked, Otika too. Let me address her right now. Cause she'll, she'll see this. Um, I would ask Otika to honor, please, what you had said um, when you said that at least you would help with the legal side of it, if it came to it. And I'm asking you to do that. You know, you were sent a packet that had everything in it. You could have saved the whole matrix case when it was being thrown and handled and you chose not to. I'm asking you and your new husband or husband from long ago to actually do what Stephen's saying and provide the evidence. At yeah, least you don't have to contact either one of us. No, uh, in fact, I prefer she didn't. She can contact she didn't. people that talk to us. It doesn't have right. to be us. But some, if you want to get that uh, item to us, we're yes. more than open and ready yes. to uh, accept that. In fact, my preference is that I never see her again. I don't want to ever see her again. But if she could provide the materials, that would be great. I have no yeah. interest in seeing yeah, her. Yeah, it's again. not an invitation to rekindle. Yeah, I don't want to ever. I don't want to be her ever again. I don't ever want to have anything to do with her again. But I would like to have her fulfill her promise of giving the evidence over. She failed us at the most crucial time when she knew. I'm sure she still thinks about it every now and then. I would. I don't know how you could shake it after all we invested together for five years to address Robertson and everything else and all the facts she knew. I don't know how you could have done what she did, but, but at least I can ask you, Otika, to provide what you promised and that's it. Then go your own way. Good riddance. But thank so you. So I, I have another question and um, take as long as you want to answer it. But uh, from, so the matrix was released in 99 by Warner brothers. Right. And uh, the last one revolutions was all three. So there's about four years there. And um, you said oh, oh 09 or oh, 06? Oh, 09. Oh, 09 is when, oh, they, when uh, you found out. Yeah, okay. that's when they made sure I knew. That's when the honeypot wife came forward and showed me, look, here's the little girl graphic, a little girl pointing at the sun. Here's a little girl at the train station. They wanted me to go, oh, that's my work. So they made sure I knew in 2009, at the end of 2009. So run the latches, run the statue. And how was that for you first finding out about it? I was blown away. In fact, there was entries. Uh, we made a website immediately and put it all up there. And that's where Rank and the attorney came in. It was classmates with Burroughs on the run now or trying to hide out. They, um, Rankin was saying, you know, we have to strike that site, strike that site. They'll be using that. Well, they had copies of it because he was classmates with them. And so they had copies of every entry. You see my reaction on that entry on that website. You see how blown away I am by the entries on the website. And I do have copies of those entries. So I, I, you just give me an idea. I'd like to put those up on the new website. I'd like to put up some of those original entries they were afraid of that, that they had Rankin and Burroughs striking. So Yeah, and I, I think that would be a good idea, too, to just have it where you can scroll through everything. I think it's a great idea. Resurrect it. Because that was like, that was the initial response where you see I'm just blown away. Just like, yeah, like I, you, yeah. this has a, been a constant theme with, with you, Tom, with going to these you're going on these shows and interviewing with these people, but not all of these interviews stay up and no. it's not anything for like, it's from both sides. It's both the people that interview you pull it and the, the video host, like the platforms end up pulling it at some point. Right. So just the fact that we've been able to stay online without anything pulled from just YouTube alone is, is impressive. Amen. It's mammoth. And you got to understand, too, there's these groups that are going around approaching every single host. They approach all these hosts and tell them, don't use them. He's evil. Any girl that wants to date me, she, they get approached within two weeks. You've got a group called, they call themselves a mortal remnant. They actually take a mortal remnant. Yeah. And because I said remnant in the thing, this guy named Royce Babcock got together with this group that are connected to the FBI. And they're like a Stewart group. And they just came in. He actually claims to be Jesus Christ. Wow. It's incredible. And so he was, they were saying that they're going to help me do this stuff, bring it all forward, line up all these groups. And what they did was they didn't do any product at all. All they did was try to shoot down. And so all these groups have all these contacts from this Royce Babcock, who's this goofball out of Canada, who is there working for the FBI, failed at everything he did. And uh, in fact, there's this one thing with tinfoil on his head. He has a picture of 
And his whole job, just like Sophia Stewart's and Kate Chilton's, was centered around destroy the original author. And so it was unbelievable. Then he claimed this, like the honeypot wife did. He actually claimed this, that he channeled, he claims, it's not true, that he channeled the work, the immortals through me, that it's his work. See how Warner Bros. and Disney works? So it's like he, he claims, Royce Babcock claims he's nobody, absolute nobody. With his, He calls them the three wise men, his guys. One's an ex-con out of jail. And what you have is this guy claiming that he channeled the work through me, so it's his work. The honeypot wife said the same thing. She said that I had a phrase, a uh, quote, that's dare to live by letting go. She claimed that I it was channeled through me for her, so therefore it's her property. What? See the argument? Yeah. So this whole mysticism thing enters in where Royce Babcock claims that he channeled the immortals all of it through me and that he's Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. And he's the guy contacting all these hosts along with Sophia Stewart contacting having your minions contact all these people so that's why i disappear from sites and yeah Sophia's not doing anything right now just promoting her book wearing that's large it. glasses and showing her, her cleavage right oh that's it that and last show I, I still apologize to the audience for that <laughs> well the compilation <laughs> was given to me of her entries and it's just like she can't even talk right let alone no. write. she's never written a screenplay and whenever if, she's on camera she's like matrix i know and it's like matrix 4 comes out why didn't she stop it you know if she's the owner if she's proven the owner and won some case why did she allow it to go on you know yeah, that's like, kind of the damning question with her yeah she's she's really just a nobody that was brought so in she, she showed up like 10 years after the last movie came out she showed up right when you were going to trial or like roughly and <laughs> she's still at it. <laughs> still at it. She's still going. We talked about the blue pill being the good pill. And then suddenly on her site, remember it says one view for something. On her site, it says the red pill is based on the blood of the children. The blue pill is the, no, the red pill is the good pill. The red pill is based on the blood of the children. But it's like, what? So she's trying to counter us saying that the blue pill is good. Now, Hollywood didn't know what to do with that. So now they started, they started that movement where they said it's a green pill. It's a purple pill. It's the blue and red pill are both bad. No, the only one that would know whether the red pill is good or bad is the original author. That's the only one that will know what was intended would be the original author's intentions. The one that intended it. So the blue pill is good based on the author's eye. What you see the author, you know, is relaying through the author's eye. And the red pill is based on blood of children. It's bad. The blue pill is given by, excuse me, the Morpheus character when, after Neo is cut from the program. Smith gives the red pill to get him in the program. He's cut from the program by the architect's desire and plan. And then Morpheus offers him the blue pill in underground. Now you asked about Zion. Mm -hmm. Zion is when I pitched to Bonaventura, he asked about where it all came from. And I said that I had this experience where I said to God that, you know, I was praying to God. I said, you know, I want to, if you're there, I want to um, please you do it right. And this whole idea came uh, that I was weeping that night saying, I want to be in your presence. I want to do this right. And I got a scripture in the Bible where it was actually the pages were turning. I was like, wah. Where this parallel universe thing, where the, you know the whole thing, where they can affect gravity and light—that's what I believe. I put my finger on the Bible and open it. It said, "The sons of Israel ask weeping the way to Zion, and I'll show them a way, and make a covenant with them forever." That's badly paraphrased, but that's where Zion comes in. So I told him about Zion during the pitch session. That that's where this whole thing started from. This desire to write this thing was for through art, and um, that Wintergreen was a city in D.C. where all the Congress and everything, all the different senators and uh, office would go a city underground it's already there and so i said that's the city underground so they changed it to zion when it's actually wintergreen and um so i have the city underground they take the name that i pitched it with talked about to, to bonaventure and applied it to it so that's why you have zion everything's tied together they didn't leave a scrap or a morsel untouched so they used every morsel in fact they said they're trying to see if they use up the rest of the story joel silver said on set so that's why Animatrix, again, real quick, Animatrix is shot to use up the rest of the story. Anything they didn't use, making it up as they go along in that visual storyboard off the original work, 190 matchups, 
they throw into Animatrix as shorts to get credit for using up the rest of the story. Yeah, I, I remember, so I, like I looked through some of your other interviews and you brought up one that I don't think you brought up here with me before, but an Animatrix matchup of the, uh, I guess the woman in that like mind oh, yeah. state where she's like floating in, <laughs> yes. in there. Yes. And this other entity tries to reach out and touch her and she gets spooked and like runs away. And you said that was actually something in, in the Immortal script as well. It's what I pitched in um, uh, when I was pitching Immortals. They said, do you anything else? I said, I have the dream movie. Okay, yes, yes. So yeah, right? that's what and, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, and the dream movie, what's so wild is they use that for, um, also that's why Neo flies in Matrix. They mixed it together. Because in the dream movie, the experiments are done on the um, inmates who are brought in for the experiment. And the experiment on dreams, sounds like Neuralink, doesn't it? Precursor. And what happens is the one character is able to fly in his dream to escape danger. And so he is then assigned to the rest of the um, uh, candidates to do a group dream where he's sort of the mind guy in charge of them, all linked, all linked, right? And uh, what happens is in the dream, he tries to get them around a the campfire, tries to get them to flee danger. They don't, they can't fly. They can't fly in the dream. They, they die one by one. And so that's why um, when he uh, is in that dream state, he sees one of his friends that had been mangled earlier. What happens in your dream happens to your body. And that guy comes up and uh, he's talking normal, normal voice. Like, what's wrong, Jim? What's wrong? And he's totally mangled and grotesque. And in that dream state, our main character, Jim, feels that he can touch him maybe and restore him. And so what he does is he says, don't, you know, and the character goes, you know, what are you doing, Jim? What are you doing? He touches him and he freaks out. The guy freaks out, like, like jump scare. And because he's not going to be able to heal him in the dream. So what they did in Animatrix is since that was pitched to Bonaventura, which has a direct link to the Wachowskis and Jill Silver, um, you have um, uh, the character in Animatrix, robot, the robot. Again, robots instead of robot-like people. Yeah, they have to go that far. So they put the girl who died into the dream with the robot. The robot goes to touch her, thinking he can bring her back to life. And she freaks out. Same thing. And that's the last thing they put basically in Animatrix. They want to use up that final one. See? Because they couldn't put it in the Immortals. So what they did was, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Matrix version. Mm -hmm. version. So that's why that's there. And when you look at the imagery, it's like, that's exactly the dream movie, right? And then you got Interstell uh, Inter Inception. Inception is all dreams, yeah. Right, where you have the character's wife falls off the window ledge, uncertain whether she is in the dream or not in the dream. And in the dream movie, the ending is, that I pitched to Bonaventura, was that the main character, after he failed in this experiment with you know saving all the guys that were intermixed the left the survivors of the candidates were with him in the final segment a shared dream experiment where he couldn't save them he wakes up from that disaster uh, emotionally you know affected he is foggy right he sees a scalpel and a, a man in a lab coat technician in a lab coat he picks up the scalpel and holds it looks like he has the advantage now he's got the scalpel against this guy he backs away to a window ledge feels the window ledge behind him and tries to fly to escape danger in the fogginess of forgetting what's reality and what's not. So he goes back to his instinctual response that works and falls to his death, not a happy ending. That's why they stuck that in Inception. See, they use that up also. She what jumps out, yeah, the other, the wife jumps out the window in that movie. The and same it's a main plot point as well. Plot lifted from the dream movie. So what this, what, uh, Wachowski did was a mixed dream movie with Immortals, and you have Neo flying to escape danger. See it? Then they think in their small minds, Superman. So they make it Superman powers, which ruins the story. There's nothing at stake. Of course he's going to win. In the Immortals, there is no dream movie mixed in. You don't have Neo flying. He's like a fish out of water using regular abilities to try to succeed, and it's very, very difficult. If he didn't have the architect's help, he wouldn't succeed because the architect has plans for him to infiltrate Zion underground. So it makes sense when you put it back. It's ruined when you mix the muddiness of what the Wachowskis did. They did a great disservice to humanity and to audiences 
in the ripoff. They were the worst candidates on the planet to re-render the work. They make no sense of it. They can't explain it in interviews. They still can't explain it. And they couldn't explain it to Warner Brothers. And Joel Silver got it wrong too in his small mind. Voice. Something that this reminds me of is um, when Matrix Reloaded was released in 03, there were no spoilers of the architect scene prior to the film being released. So that makes me wonder if um, that was something that they didn't include in their shooting script and they shot that after the fact because there's only two actors in it. Right. Yeah. And was- they were able to insert it so that they could use it up. Like that's the only explanation. This is a very distinct memory of mine that the architect scene was not spoiled ahead of time. Well, it was very important. And you just hit upon it so essential because what happened was, remember they said that everybody on set said to blow up the matrix to end it. They didn't know how to end it. How would you not know how to end it if you had a shooting script? They didn't, there was no shooting scripts. Remember Warner Bros. attorneys on tape say there's no shooting scripts. There was no shooting scripts. There's no, yeah. no drafts. So what you have is exactly what you said. And they put that scene in at the end because they didn't know how to end it. It didn't make any sense. It's not supposed to be the architect talking to the Oracle, the Oracle hugging little girl. It's supposed to be Neo hugging his restored daughter, you know, and she points to the sun, points to the moon. That's what's supposed to be. Yeah. And when you like the architect in reloaded one scene at the end, okay. That's, that's passable for whatever, but then you get into revolutions. You don't see that character again until that final scene, which again seems shoehorned in there. It was. It be, what's interesting is they actually call it the something like the Deuce McKenna or whatever it is. Deuce um, Ex Machina. Yes, they call it that because that's what Greek tragedies or whatever. That's how they would end um, a play if they had no way to end it. They just have God to send. And so they didn't know how to end it. So they did the Greek ending of that very device where the God descends. It's, it's, Literally, it's, yeah. That, the, the, the machine ship coming down in front of Neil. What, what, are, what are you doing here? They didn't know how to end it. So they actually do that Greek device of what you do when you don't know how to end it. How the God descends. It's unbelievable. And call it that. The only way they can be clever is um, in the realm of their failure, of how they are uh, working with what they're failing at. And so they didn't know how to end it, so they used the very device of how you end what you don't know how to end. All right, since since we are this deep into this section of, the, I guess, the melding of your story and their story, how... Uh, was the Agent Smith character handled at the end of Immortals? So, like, from what the public knows from Warner Brothers' release of this, is Agent Smith became corrupted and a, like he's a program in their movie, but he's a real person in yours. All right. So, what was like that final interaction between the main characters supposed to be like? Ah. Uh. The interaction actually between, well, the ending they have when they. Well, yeah, the, the main character finds out more about the Smith character after their last interaction, from what you've said. Let me tell you how it happens. Oh, well, yeah. What was their last interaction let me before explain. the revelation? Let me address it. It's a great question. So let's do it their way, first of all. Smith faces off with Neo as identical figures at the end. We have identical figures at the end. Ours is the architect's son, son, looking like Christ, facing off the real Christ, identical figures at the end. Neo is watching this happen. His little girl is restored to him and points to the son. That's what's supposed to happen in the original. And they carried over and kept it, you know, they copied it and did the exact same ending, yet they reversed the character's positions. So Smith isn't in the ending of the immortals. The architect's son is who was who was um, purging Smith. Now, the agents are purged. So what you okay. have is because they're not needed anymore for the equation to be balanced, right? Now in the, the ripped off version, there's no balance to the equation. There's a tentative um, detente piece, and it doesn't make any sense. It's tentative. It's just it's nothing satisfying, nothing lasting, nothing solved. Really, it's a timeout basically, and. 
um, what you have in uh, the original is Neo has a face off with Smith at the 9-11 event, basically this hospital explosion thing. And they are both taken down. He, he cuts out, get this, cuts out Smith's enhancer or near link with a shard of glass, which they use in Elysium. I want to, yes, I want to pause right here briefly. So the hospital blowing up, that was used in the dark night. And we've talked about this, but I just want to address that again for the audience. Hospital blowing up scene comes from the immortals. And yeah. Nolan is part of this whole cabal. And he was instructed to insert a hospital scene of a building blowing up because and of Tom's work here. Big thing out of it. They did a big thing out of it, all kinds of angles, multiple explosions, him walking. It was a big deal. They blew up a real building for that sh- for that, that whole scene. They on. made a big deal out of it. Made a, made a fortune on that one, just like the graphics. And so what you have is, thank you, you have this um, where they're, he cuts the enhancer, the, the Neuralink out of, uh, which is a bad thing about the Neuralink, that thing that can be taken with all your memories, out of uh, Smith, right? And he cuts it out, which they used in Elysium, shard of glass even. And they keep repeating that shard of glass thing all the time now, even black sails, everywhere else is overdone. Just like the eyes popping open all the time. You can zoom in and then pop open. They do that all the time now too. Oh, it's nausea. There are no brains out there in Hollywood. Anyway, so what you have is he cuts a shard of glass, uh, cuts their hands out. They're both taken down to underground with a tunnel, taken down underground. And um, they, Neo learns he has to use Smith's memories to find the cortex building and the, the dome at the end, the dome, right? And have Trinity's help to find it. That's in the original work. And it, there's a scene where he goes and confronts Smith, who does not have his, his neural link anymore, basically a babbling idiot at this point. He's an immortal program. He's relying on that. He doesn't have his memories anymore. That's why the blend scene where Smith feels he's blended with Neo and corrupted is because, yeah, they're blended. He's feeling what he feels. And that's why Sense Eight was done after the thing was thrown. All these parallels, all these connections. Anyway, the last one of the last scenes with Smith is: remember when the um, Squiddies all invade Zion and the big battle goes on with the swarm? Mm-hmm. That's going on. Smith gets some coherency back and is in the tunnels, laughing and screaming at Neo, while the wall of flames comes through the tunnel. Where they do that one key device and blows the tunnels. You have a scene missing where Smith is in the halls screaming at Neo, and the wall of flames comes and consumes Smith. Oh, wow. The original demise of Smith in original work, right? But they needed Smith at the end to replace the architect's son facing off the Christ figure. So is that why they've made that weird thing of having a character called Bane and then Agent That's- Smith downloading himself onto a human? See Smith in flames and the vision looking through his eyes. Yeah, which- yeah have in mortals in immortals you have the character looking through the agent's eyes and seeing smith it's in the immortals yeah and the flames are supposed to like represent spirit or something like that oh well, it actually burns in the immortals and you got the key turn one key device to blow the tunnels in the immortals so it, that scene i thought was pretty cool where you got the key turned blowing it up one device and that's when the flames come down and consume smith and him but what happened before that scene was uh, Neo has his neural link taken out so he can be adapted to Smith's so he can use the memories, which is Sense 8. They rip off later, as soon as the case is thrown, like Oblivion. And what happens to Neo is he doesn't have his enhancer anymore and he's trying to function without uh, that memory device anymore. He goes down to Smith's cell and there's a scene where he goes, which is used now. Tell me if they don't use this all the time now. He goes to him and goes, you know, um, he says, you know, who really matters to Smith? And he goes, Julian matters. Brittany matters. And he's punching him every time he says who matters. That is now done. That is now done in shows where it goes like, they matter, they matter, and they matter. And that was what he did to Smith before he's hauled off. And Smith is just this drooling idiot at that point after the answer's gone. So this confrontation happens. It's a great question, Stephen. What happens in the original work with Smith? Now, this Wachowski's ruined that really ruin that because they had to figure out how to end it right how to end it when they're using up the rest of the story and took everything out of context they should have used the little girl as it was but they yeah. did 
The little girl doesn't work if it's no longer the relationship between Neo and the little girl. And it doesn't work to substitute the oracle for Neo at the end with the little girl. There's no real relationship there. It does, we don't get a, oh my God, they're together feeling. The oracle was a dick to the uh, little girl in the Matrix. In the original work, Neo is the father of the little girl. <laughs> this, is, this is so silly, but when, when the oracle sees Sati as the new agent Smith and the audience doesn't know it yet, the moment she gets the revelation and the audience is aware that the oracle knows that the Smith standing in front of her is the old Sati, but now possessed by Smith, all her reaction is to him doing that. It's just like, yeah, bastard. I know. <laughs> what? Oh. what? You just killed your, like, your kid. <laughs> yeah, See? bastard. You know? I, did I, I ever tell you that, Smith? That's it. That's like, it. <laughs> just like, that's it. It's like there's no emotional investment in the work by the Wachowskis. They no. mock that. They there could have been a tear going down the oracle's face, like you're a something. bastard. Like you know how different that is. It's the same words, but the delivery makes all the difference. Go to Game of Thrones again, where they put all their stuff in there. All the stuff is in there, like we said, birthmark and everything else, and the names. King Tommen is the one that's you know the redheaded queen that tears papers up. My God, that's my sister. You know, worst person on the planet. What you have in there. Two is a scene where um, Ara, Ara, whatever her name is, goes and she's supposed to, by the faceless God, she's supposed to get rid of this actress who's really good. And the actress is on stage reenacting the death of Joffrey, right? Her son, the queen's son. And Ara makes a point, you know, you could do this better, rewrite it, rewrite this work, do the scene, they'd show it better, where she is not just saying, oh, my son, my dear son. She says, the queen would be angry. She'd want to hurt the one that hurt her son. She wanted to, same point you're raising right here with the Oracle. They did it badly. And if they would do what Ara said in Game of Thrones, you go yeah, back, be like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing where you do the scene over and do it right. No, the thing is, like you said about us being writers and Disney asking how long it would take to write Matrix 2. Interesting, they said two again. Um, the thing is, yes, we could fix it. Yes, we can make it more powerful. We can clean up things like you're pointing out right now. But it's from delusional, demented, talentless minds having messed with the original work. Let's just do the original work. Let's just do the original work the way it's all tied tight, where it shouldn't have been messed with, where if you lift something out of context, it's not going to tie together. No wonder on their fan page, they said the little girl's just a subplot and couldn't answer. The six generations of Zion was ridiculous. The architect knows where Zion is. There's a purpose for Zion to balance the equation. So his mind is stimulated with the pure power of worship with untainted humanity being set aside in Zion. He has a plan for it. So anyway, it all makes sense when you put it back in the original. The original will answer all questions. So what does Sophia Stewart and Warner Brothers and Disney say? No one's going to watch it. No one's going to watch the immortals if it's made. You're the one, you have the copyright all over Immortals. How many entries did we say for the Immortals? Under Tom Hanks being certificate of authorship? Along with all these yeah, other- Yeah, that's another one. So the thing is, do you think people are going to come and see it? I think people are going to want to see if there's egg on our face or if we're telling the truth or if it's real or how it ties together or answer their questions. I think they're going to want to come and see it. Love it or hate it. So that's their last throw. I want to share this scene that I- that we've been talking about with Oracle and Smith. Oh, it's so bad. I can't Let believe- me know if you hear the audio, but I think you should hear it. But God. we'll just play this short clip here just to show you the reaction that this... No, too. Now that we know, people are learning where it actually comes from. Now they can view it in this context. Yeah, yeah. So, so just to preface here, this woman is being informed that her child slash grandchild slash next of kin was just murdered. Right. Okay. She's just realized she's learning the information that her child is gone. And probably yeah. tortured. Was tortured. Yeah. Yeah. Unspeakable things by the Merovingian, I say. 
But anyway, that, that's more wishful thinking on, on creative spark here, our, our creative minds. So this is that scene of her being told the information that Sati is no longer there and that Smith overwrote her or essentially killed her. I don't hear the audio, but I see the scene. All right. Well, here she's about to say that you're a bastard. Oh, my that, God. That's it. That's that it. Is it. She Again. might as well give a care about her. Yeah. You're a bastard. And he's like, yep, yeah, I know. Isn't that incredible? But he says, he says a weird line here, too. You would know, Mom. That's like, what the shit? They're throwing anything in they can. Look at the yin-yang on the earring. And, you know, the cigarette to be cool. Anything they can throw in to embellish, they're going to. They're going to throw in yeah. anything they can to make it look cooler, sexier, you know. And this, uh, I mean, this alone was kind of weird because they, they had to recast the, the Oracle of all things. Well, you know what? That Oracle doesn't look like Sophia Stewart. No. Um, the I other mean, one does, but not this one. No. She has a, the mannerisms down, but she looks nothing like nothing. Uh, Gloria, wh- whatever name. Yeah, Great whatever. actress, but uh, it um, got a question like, did that actress know about your script on set? Like, she's passed away now, but and every single actor and actress on the in the production knows the twenty foot rule and that they what they saw on set. They all know that there was no working drafts. They all know what the attorney said on tape. They all know every one of them. Yeah, someone, Connie, in the chat asked, what's, what's up with all the smoking, I always wonder. Attempts to be cool, attempts to make it look sexy, attempts to be, you know, they're throwing anything like the yin-yang earrings. Anything where people, go, they, they, what they're doing is Easter egg things too, where they're going to go, they think that people go, oh man, they're going to be so amazed when they find this. Because Wachowski even said, there's so many things we stuck in you'll never know about. All right, here's, here's another random thing. Sorry to just jump around here. Please. But just CGI. Just the CGI here, this one shot. (laughs) It looks like it's out of a video game to me. But actually watching, like, this, these are great visuals to watch, but there's no purpose to it for the story. I mean, are we supposed to be seeing what it would be like if Neil was watching from, like, a corner of the room? Well, you know what we're told, too, is we're told that when we go frame by frame, we hire people in the future, we get our studios going, when they go frame by frame, they stick gonna stuff in there. Find our names in it. We're going to find more information, addresses, you name it. If they stuck all that stuff in the first graphic, including the high school birthday, dad's name, fiance's birthday, all that in the first graphic, you're going to find so much throughout all of this work. We're right here. We'll probably start to find spelled out names and things like that. So, what's going to be interesting when people come forward again, further, well, people are coming forward, they'll be able to tell us more and more, those involved in the graphic sections. Uh, where to look it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be amazing what's gonna show up later because right here it looks like letters right across i see park p-a-r-k at the bottom hold on stop right there oh my god okay go to the center bottom center bottom right there p over a go next r go next k oh yeah i see that too right away (laughs) a random script page out as soon as you freeze frame a shot, it's there. It's there. I see it clearly. Yeah, that's kind of wild. P-A-R-K. Park. My middle name in the middle. God. And then it just goes away after that, too. I've screenshotted it. Yeah, screenshot that. That is phenomenal. Right there. You just, you just grabbed a random shot. And my middle name's in the middle. Right there. There it is. Let's see if I can do this. At Unbelievable. See what I'm saying? That's exactly what we were told. That illustrates the point. So we're going to see these things all through. All through. They stuck it through because they thought nobody. And so also, them. yeah. So what's up with this goo shit? Like this. So this looks like they were trying to imitate the mirror. Like this, this mirror slime. Well, whatever that- this is. Star Trek, they're doing the thing from Star Trek where the early on Star Treks, they had um, the black goo, the Reichert one, where the black goo would consume the uh, crew members. 
and creep over their body and flow over their body. That's the black goo from Star Trek. So this is flipped out, though. This is absolutely flipped out. And then they made so I give Hugo Weaving a lot of credit here for his acting. And the uh, the whoever did the cinematography for this this shot right here. Right. Because they're trying to portray just this very dark evil presence. And that's what Smith is in this version of the story. They yeah, overblow it. Right. He's he has they're- no soul, he's an AI, he doesn't this is also me projecting my like my ideas onto this thing. Smith is not that big of a character or that deep of a character. We are putting that meaning to it because the Wachowskis didn't do that in this. Right. They just make him they turn him into the virus. They turn him into what he was trying to destroy, basically. Because he did, became his own villain. They didn't know what to do with it. So they go back and forth. There's no continuity. There's no real connection. And they're just going off the visuals of the storyboard, making up as they go along. But they want to, and even the actors said, you know, well, you know, they they don't even make sense when they're talking, but they're geniuses. They came up with the work. So as soon as it's stripped from them that the original work that we have the copyright to and they copyright this title so extensively, once people get that, that they didn't actually even do this and just Plastic Man and Carnivore is their thing, then they'll realize the Wachowskis are what they are, not smart at all. You know, and then you go back to that Bound clip again, that Bound interview where they're talking and you hear how they talk. Yeah, how Sophia Stewart talks. Yeah, then you get the idea that failed people are brought in to steal the work so they can claim it in-house. The studios can claim it in-house by bringing failed people in to claim it. That's what it is. I'm so angry at what they did with the Britney character and the Sati character. What a waste. Yeah. What a ruined character. What a ruined character. Anybody that's still questioning anything about Tom's story, just look at, just take this Sati character and you try to explain to me what the purpose of this character is. There's nothing that's good enough for me to, I mean, any answer I get besides no. Tom's. You know what, too? It's they not have- good enough. He has no direction. That poor kid had no direction. That actress had no direction. There were she- no children in the, the original movies either. This is like the first appearance of a child besides the animatrix. The and char- they, they just blew it. They, yeah. Like you said, they blew it. The character wasn't important to the Wachowskis. The character was not, she's in, the, in their fan page, she says she's just a subplot. So this poor child actress had no direction whatsoever. She wasn't important to the Wachowskis, but she's essential to the original author. Imagine if this character was in the original film they made and instead of having a Smith being like, you would know, mom, it'd be Sati saying like something so like you, oh, of course, you know, dad to Neil. And then that's the rebel. You see, this is just bastardizing your work. I'm sorry. I'm even going into this stuff, Another but thing- I, I have to address it because this is in the, the Hollywood canon and we have to dispel all this crap. Well, look at the embellishment. So that's why we're doing this. Exactly. Look at Stephen, the embellishment again. They want to make it exotic. So they take an Indian girl and make her Brittany, make her Sati. Sati is not, Brittany's not supposed to be an Indian girl. Brittany's actually a young Caucasian girl in the original work because she's wow. the daughter of Neo. So they have to make everything embellished and uh, exotic. So they bring in an Indian girl, you know, and that's supposed to be deeper. It's like they're small minds. They do that. And they don't give the girl any direction. There were, there were so many like interesting concepts that could have been explored that weren't. The fact oh. that they said Sati was born within the Matrix. Yep. AI giving birth. Why not explore that more? No, and she's you- just going to the train station to get another, to have a better life. A bit better than our parents. Well, what, is, what lineage do these programs come from? What does their family tree look like? They don't have one. Well, that's the family another, tree starts with whoever programmed them. Another ripoff element they took too was Trinity was not was born in the program. She was not a free human, basically. She was okay. Program. And so what, what here you go. She was an anomaly which could function in and outside the program without taking the pill. See? So they used that, didn't they? They put it on Sati. They keep taking things and overlapping them as they make up as they go along, 
overlaying them on different characters and reversing the roles of different characters, even reversing the tunnelers. The tunnelers oh. are for Zion for the underground. The tunnelers are not for the enemy. The tunnelers are for Zion, the underground. They access it through the tunnels. See, you don't need the tunnelers. You don't need a tunneler drilling down a Zion. Just access the tunnels. So it makes no sense, does it? No. And yeah, then they... I'm they, sorry. They, they <laughs> By having these gigantic tunnelers, they overblow everything, just like they did in Elysium. Hey, with- those tunnelers are something that uh, Elon Musk is trying to make with his boring company, isn't he? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Now, lift the everything. drills were in Matrix Revolutions, and the drills are in Elon Musk's lab, or whatever, the, whatever right. lab he bought, because he doesn't Mortals. create anything. Yep, they're in Immortals, and they also put them in um, uh, Total Recall. So oh, wow. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But look how they embellish everything because they don't know what to do with it. They don't understand the work. So they embellish everything. That's why you have that little Indian girl. That's why you have the gigantic tunnelers. That's why in Elysium you have the giant box on the back of the guy's neck for the Neuralink enhancer. I like it calling it enhancer rather than Neuralink. Original terminology is an enhancer. You know. And uh just like uh, Sense8 and um, Alder Carbon. Look at the cheap titles they come up with off of the original work, Alder Carbon. It's like, that's stupid. That's like just saying what it is. You know, they really aren't, the ripoffs have such dumb titles. I'm sorry. Anyway. All right, I'm, I'm going to tear Matrix wish- Revolutions and another one here. That's the scene I was shown when they were first showing me in 2009 to let me know the work was ripped off because they wanted me to take litigation they could control and throw. Watch the sequence of cuts here. Shot of the one character, shot of the other character, back to him. And then here, it just goes Neo. It goes the wide. Neo, him, Neo, him, Neo, him, Neo, him, Neo, him. Keeping on back the- and forth. It's just Line after line after line. Three cameras. Two of them. Three cameras. Two shots. Simple, inexpensive, easy. And the producer from Hollywood made a good point. He's like, why did they change it to a well-dressed couple giving up their kid in the program? Why would they give up the kid? In mine, it's haggard people, crowded, a crowd of haggard people trying to give up their kid for a better life in the program. doesn't look like that kid needs a better life in the program. Looks like it has a pretty good life outside the program. And they never make sense of anything. Yeah, here it is. This makes me so upset. I hate what they did to this. The actress was so bad. They ruined the scene. Yeah. I don't know if this is it. So I had it before. I found it. There. <laughs> no, it's not as easily. This happens quite often, Tom. There's stuff that I go and look for, and then I go to look for it again, and it's gone. <laughs> so there's a train. Here it is. All right. This pisses me off. So this is what it was supposed to look like. This is what the revolution scene is supposed to be. This is what it's supposed to be. The actress is really bad at it. She overdoes yeah, here we go. It's coming up. Yeah, this is the train station from the Immortals. Lifted with Will Smith, who was supposed to be Neo. This is what it's supposed to be. And I can totally see this too, especially after everything you've explained. Like this makes sense that this is what should have been in the story. I said it was like getting out of Z- Saigon at the end it's of the a, It's a train station. Right. There should and be gatherings of people there. Get their kids to safety. They're desperate. And they're calling out. They're haggard. They're not well off. Interesting they're having the military wear and the face masks in this. Oh, yeah. So that's also programming that's been in the works for quite a while. But mask, yeah. There's and then here's the crying woman here. Take yes. my son, take my person, please. And you talked about this exactly, like yes, is exactly from the screenplay. God, I hated that, Stephen. I hated that 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 actress who's doing it so badly. They ruined it. So they, what they said, remember, they, Joel Silver said they hope they use up the rest of the story. So what they're doing is they're using up the rest of the story and they're throwing in the other one. So you can't sue them, they think, because like, look, we put it in here, we put it over here, put it over here. We can do suicide in all these places. And that's something. Yeah. And they're, they do it in such a way where 
it does kind of slip the mind if you're not thinking about this stuff and diving into it like we are. But nope. it's here for you to see. Like, I, it's all being used. Again, God help us. And, and it keeps going. This is like a several minute scene. Oh, yeah. They're going to milk it. They're going to milk it. They want to make sure they use up that scene. They use up the rest of the story. They use it up. God help us. But there's the haggard woman with the little girl. If you go to the original work, and um, I have it marked in the other one here. That's actually in a vault. The original. Okay, that's when they go forward. Yeah, it's a far cry from train station that's whitewashed and in the middle of nowhere and the kid's bored and wanders over to a guy that just apparated. And absolutely. And, and saved on the budget. <laughs> they saved on the budget. Oh, and the train station is called Mobile Avenue. The most basic shit. Here look we go. Here. Mm. Look, yeah, look right here. Yeah, so, well, let me stop screen sharing. They use the script for legend, right? Here's the train station scene. Silvery liquid mirrors are the security devices. It says short lifers, those that are not in the program, right? Crowd, crowd against well-dressed travelers. Well, they kept the well-dressed traveling couple. Jim places his hand on a scanner as its panel displays five credits. That's what we're using now. We're going to start using that for transactions. Jim passes through the what resembles a wall of silver liquid. Silverly, I can't say it, liquid, which reforms into a clear gate. Some of the crowd call to Jim and others as they pass through. Crowd, take me with you. We're related. Please don't leave me here. Now we're into legend, right? Now we're getting where they got legend. Damn Will Smith for doing it too. Will Smith knew it was ripped off. He saw there was no script. Damn Will Smith for what he did. And now he's being slapped down because he's, he's not being so compliant. Will Smith, just like Otika, should have come forward. He knows the work's ripped off. And I'm not going to let him go on this one. It says, haggard woman, take my little girl. Jim turns and sees a haggard woman with a little girl holding a tattered doll. Haggard woman, she's your daughter, it's true. Which reminds him of the daughter he lost. It makes no sense when they take it out of context in Matrix. Jim looks moved. An unkept man tries to run through a gate that a scanned passenger is passing through once in the program. The watery wall is already reforming. Midway in the man is stuck like an insect in resin. The man screams as he nearly neatly cut in two by the reformed liquid mirror gate. A nearly nearby guard seems unconcerned as he approaches Jim. They got the unconcerned, right? The guard points a hand device at Jim, looks down and reads it. Guard, enjoy your flight, Mr. Reese, which is what the Neuralink will allow them to do. The Hagger woman walks towards Jim as the little girl with the doll scurries off. Hagger woman, her name is Brittany. Guard, family name? Information about immortals is sold on the black market. They're always claiming family connections. Jim looks over at the little girl with the doll and ragged short lifers crowding at low wall near the terminal, staring through barbed wire at the greenery beyond images of the World War II wars all ghetto. ghetto. Pods patrol the perimeter of the city from the air, which was used in oblivion. And then what's interesting is this is a scene that got Blumcroft interested in stealing the work from District 9. He says in an interview that the scene that moved him, he didn't say he wrote it. He says writing likes pull, it's like pulling teeth for him. The reason he wanted to do Elysium, here's the scene that made Blumcroft want to do Elysium. I don't know if his name is actually Blumcroft, what his name is. It goes like this. Um, Jim looks over the little girl with a tall doll and ragged short lifers crowding a low wall near the terminal, staring through barbed wire at the greenery beyond. That's what he says is what made him want to do Elysium. That's the very scene right there. Damn them all. This is the scene that what the Wachowskis were supposed to try to portray from your script. They needed to save them legally. Fight it. Yeah. So this is what was supposed to be portrayed That's with it. a ripoff. That's and it. then this is what they ended up producing because they just suck at making a uh, a dime at the box office because they suck. Right. They didn't care. They're just using up the story. Just using up the elements. So since budget cuts, they got this. Thanks, right? <laughs> Empty they... train station, not bustling with military and everything. And then they... Pushing people away. Well, get this. Then they go back to their shot. Right? Go back to your other shot. Yeah. 
All right, then to make it exciting, there's no stakes, there's no adventure, no intensity, just boring. Then to make it exciting, what do they do? They throw in the train man from Ghost. And Mad Max. Yes. The, the pilot... The, the, the pilot from Mad Max is also the train man from Ghost, and he's in this. And he's all the same fucking character. Why? <laughs> and why? Because they're making up as they go along, throwing in whatever they're familiar with in their small minds. Make sense? Mm -hmm. This guy, would you give up your daughter if you're living that high life? That well, well the, di the dialogue in this scene, the more I think about it, the more ridiculous it is. It's ridiculous. He it says is. something along the lines of, we are trying to get something somewhere where it's not supposed to be. Right. We need they're, to get something somewhere where it's not supposed to be. Improvise. Get to the point. They're Just say what you mean. <laughs> they go along and they're not given much. If you look at his eyes, he's actually going, oh, sh you know, shice. What's my next line? What can I say? What can I say? They're, they're, they show actors that he's called the actor's hey, nightmare. What was my line? Oh, yes, there it is. <laughs> That's, it's called the actor's nightmare, where the actor's on stage not knowing what to say. Look at their he's eyes. He's probably not even talking to Keanu here. No. They don't These know what to are say. probably all shot singly. They are. They're with separate. each actor in a different location. They're cutaways. They're cutaways. Right. Like, look at this bottom thumbnail here of, like, Sati looking up at her dad. Like, why does she care about her dad? Why do we need to care about her? We don't. In their version, you don't. In mine, you do. You have to. Look at the room of monitors up there. Yeah. Lifted. It... <sighs> and even that oracle right there does not look like Sophia Stewart. No. I'm sorry. It doesn't. And if her claim is that she's an African-American woman or a black woman... All right, so what? That means I look like Steven Spielberg or Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah. This is that that meme. Was that put up by Elon Musk? Yes. Oh, he he, he, I, he probably like copied it and reshared it. But oh. he put he put that up at one what did it say? 119 in the morning. Well, obviously they need to feel like he needs to be covered. They need to cover for him. He's desperate. If he did that himself, he's desperate. That means the mainstream media didn't do it for him. He did it himself. He's yeah. have validity. He's and desperate. the question is, who else is saying that Elon Musk is the enemy? Uh, no one, who? really. We're the only ones that are pointing We're, it. Yeah, us and maybe, maybe two other people. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'd say attach the interview to this section right here. Attach it right onto him. He'll love that. He'll love that. Oh, oh, yeah, why not? Just attach it right onto it. All right, let's do that. All right, I'm going to stop the screen what here. But, yeah. What is he afraid of? Why is he reacting? Yeah. Yeah. And everything being shadow banned is it's just incredible. I can't believe he's still just okay. He took over this platform. He's changed the name of it now. And he still hasn't reinstated some... Uh, you know how long it took for some of these accounts to be reinstated? He's kind of just like... He's bought the thing and he just doesn't care. Like uh, The show yesterday where a survivor of Epstein Island was saying how uh, Elon Musk has just totally sterilized her accounts, froze her accounts, and everything else, he is not giving free speech on Twitter. He's shutting down anything for the holiday, Hollywood's purposes and the agency's purposes. Here's Whatever. another tweet I'm going to tweet to him. Why are you worried? And here's a link to our interview we're doing right now. And it's a reply I, to this. I like it. And uh, that'll be great. You'll get one view, Elon. <laughs> yeah, just Elon. Yeah, and then he goes and he just locks it up. It's like, no one else needs to see I, that. They are so on, like, they're watching everything we do, I'm told. Their contacts will tell me that. Like, they're amazed to tell me, like, you wouldn't believe they're watching everything you do. They're watching. Even that guy, that um, that moron named um, Royce Backup, right, has the group, the three wise men, ex-cons and stuff. He's, he sent a message saying they're watching everything you do. It's, it's like, yeah. And they have a lady in it um, who's connected to uh, FBI in their group. Another one is connected to armed forces or air force intelligence, CIA in their group 
So it's amazing they're using these failed people to form groups to harass and contact. Don't use, don't use, don't use the anonymous is. Anyway, we're, we're revealing it. I'm glad we're doing it. I'm glad we got smart people that are following and get it. Thank God. Because yeah. each does freaks the other side out. Each person that does sends them on the run, the other side on the run. They're on the run now, like you discover with uh, Linda Burrow and Kate Chilton, these names that are, were actually at my deposition. They're the ones that are uh, working with Sophia Stewart and the agencies and are on the run. The yeah, ones- and those are big names to get recognized for yeah. the public so that the public's aware of it. And also just for everybody else that's been following you and, and our interviews, that those two people are such a linchpin in this whole situation. Oh, they're the ones that groomed and brought in Elon Musk, along with the Wachowskis. Both Elon Musk and Wachowskis failed at what they did. They're brought in and given the mainstream PR off the charts so they can then service and steal the work. They're brought in to steal the work. Elon Musk has done nothing. Again, it kills me that he says that when he was five and six years old, the piano play, music playing his little documentaries and stuff, that he uh, couldn't stop the ideas coming. Again, where's your library of evidence? Where's your work? Where's your ideas? We have ours and we'll be showing it. You're coming down to see it. You'll see it when we're working on the documentary. You'll see the library part of it. So, yeah. And it's funny that Disney tagged me that Disney calls me the library. That's what they call me. The library. Isn't that something? That's their context. Call me. Refer to me as they all have nicknames for each other. And then what's interesting, too, is that uh, Mike Lang says that Disney's library is in a Jersey warehouse and it's worth um, like one point two billion now. But that's. That's the immortals. This is what they claim the Disney library. And it was Mike Lang's responsibility and position as executor or uh, executive to be in charge of acquisition of intellectual property, property that Disney didn't own. So they have a hard copy of this in New Jersey, New Jersey warehouse. They said Isn't that's something. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Thanks Stephen, for doing this. This oh, is been- it's my pleasure. Yeah. You, you had me make discoveries today a lot. Yeah. So. And like every time we do this, we find some new material and, and it just adds to what we're doing here. And this is exposing the cabal and really, I mean, holding them accountable. But we're getting all of your ducks in a row. We and have all of this evidence. We have like anecdotal evidence that stacks. Up. Like you take all the little bits and pieces by themselves. It's like mm, with some of them, but like the big ones that that just nail it uh it's indisputable in many ways like your high school being in that scene the first scene you wrote being the first scene that's shot that's such a solid thing and they mentioned that that's the first scene they shot yes yes then the first graphic they made yeah which is the most important one to them but you're doing so yeah we're going to continue doing this every first Saturday of the month and um, it's at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time every time and uh, we're continuing to peel the layers of this onion back and um, a lot of it is also detaching from what we think we know Hollywood is and presenting the, the real story here which is they've been just running like thieves using your work and it's prominent throughout many studios because they're all in cahoots with each other i said and we agreed on the, on this that it could be a rico case yeah. where they just go at hollywood and just tackle them as a conglomerate exactly exactly and they don't like this they don't like us talking about this stuff but i don't give a shit you guys stole my work you guys stole tom's work like we're coming for you that's right and you better be worried. And this isn't a threat. This is a promise. Like you will be taken down. The truth will come out. And Tom and I will be victorious in truth and in Jesus Christ. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, this is a war between um, between entities over our souls. And that's what it really comes down to with this. They want our souls. They want us to end our lives early so that they can have our souls. Neuralink don't can do, do it. Neuralink, been, Neuralink will accomplish that if we allow that to happen. That's right. We got to stop it. Yeah. It's yeah. okay not to be okay. Have hope. 
Do yeah. not kill yourselves. You are more important than you know. Yes. Whoever needs to hear this right now, this is for you, but you are more important than you know. To the people around you, you have no idea how important you are and the effect that you have on people. Yes, yes. And um, the best thing you can do to stick it to them, to stick it to the machine, is to keep living. Right. So, that, that's a really good point. And that's what we're, you know, human value, life, value of life, things like that. If 10 people hear this, they're concerned. The other side's concerned. They start running and resigning. Watch they won't them. even let two people see my tweets elon is that scared yes so take that with a grain of salt yes well done watch reactions after this program today watch reactions it'll happen so well done Stephen. you're doing an incredible job i'm looking forward to next time and thank meet. you tom yes right. we will be meeting soon so right. until the next one class dismissed All right and you have a great rest of your weekend tom good my friend Talk soon.